All right. Well, good afternoon once again. Uh, Santa Barbara, great to be on with you. This is Charles Botts, Director of Training and Communications here at Career Team, and I am excited. Uh, another week, another opportunity to be on with y'all um, and uh, provide what I hope has been informative, empowering, encouraging content, useful material that you can apply to your respective individual career transition while you are managing all that comes with living through a global pandemic and everything else that we have been facing in this incredibly challenging year. I hope sincerely that these bi-weekly touch points that the team at the Santa Barbara American Job Center, the Santa Barbara Workforce Development Board have been good enough to invest in, have been kind enough, thoughtful enough to invest in. Hopefully you have found these to be a bright spot over the last couple months as we have spent um, uh, several sessions together. We have uh, now two sessions left after today. Uh, this is our eighth session, if you can believe that, um, eight sessions. Uh, down two more to go. Um, we will be uh, connecting uh, next week. So we had been going bi-weekly. Uh, if you've been keeping score at home, next week we're going to actually be in, uh, uh, will be next week. I started to say in person, we will not be in person, but we will be back next week. Next week um, we'll have one more uh, session for the month of November and then um, we'll get through the Thanksgiving holiday and we will wrap up our 10th session um, the first week in December. So um, we'll get you, uh, get you into the holiday season fully, fully empowered, fully inspired, uh, and ready to take on the challenge of taking the next step in your career transition. And, and so uh, one of the comments that I had been making through this period is how incredibly insightful I have found the course selections made by the team um, at the Santa Barbara Workforce Board. I, I think they have put together a very compelling menu that has been incredibly responsive to the, to the times in which we are living. Uh, I think they've absolutely had a finger on the pulse of what's happening locally and how to put uh, each and every one of you in the best position possible to succeed. And I don't think today is any exception. I, I do not. Today, we're going to be looking at some material on responsible borrowing and budgeting. And so let's jump right into it. Uh, I many times um, kick off our sessions. Uh, if you've joined us before, if you've been a part of what we have uh, done previously with um, uh, uh, intro video on career team, who we are, uh, uh, what we're all about. Um, I had uh, suspended that for a couple weeks, um, but as we may have some new folks joining us, um, if you wouldn't mind humoring me, give me an opportunity um, to just play this brief video so you have a better understanding of who career team is, the organization that is bringing uh, this compelling material and content to you. Uh, so here we go. Our students are lacking the key employment skills that they need to get a job. I think we see a lot of individuals who, for a variety of reasons, are struggling to, to find their place in, in this economy. Career team came to the rescue. The program remains over 80% successful for people who are long-term unemployed. <laughs> Career team is, is, is extremely special because they satisfy specific need, when it, especially when it comes to uh, individuals who are living below the margins. I fell in a situation where I needed some assistance. They instilled something in me at a time that I needed it the most. Career team helps us to bridge that gap and provide that hands-on 
uh, direct service to those individuals to connect them with the skills that they need in order to be successful. So it both provides training and support, but also it's a, a way of the enabling the job seekers to really track their assets and bring those forward to employers. Through the Career Edge platform, we've been able to touch 22,000 youth. Youth are able to create their own digital platform and search for jobs and find out what interests them. So what I like about what Career Edge is doing is they're giving students a format to look at and say okay I just have to plug in sort of a plug and play and it's important for employers to see that. We feel like it's very creative in its format. Um, you get different options on how much you want to add, how much you want employers to see. You can customize the whole process from start to finish. Career Edge has given me the ability to post my jobs and find students on a more local level. Go right to an application find the Department of Labor, connect with a career team. By empowering students with their self-confidence and the information they need to not only get a job, but keep a job, that's a huge part of their success factors in life. Uh, excellent, so thank you for, for humoring me and allowing me to just provide a little bit of background as to um, who we are, career team, the organization, uh, that has partnered with Santa Barbara to provide um, uh, this ongoing training and development. And so um, what you didn't hear, what you didn't hear uh, about Career Team is that we are a, a financial services firm, um, that we have a specialty in uh, a budget management, uh, that we um, are an accounting firm. You didn't hear any of that, and you didn't hear any of that because, quite frankly, we, we are not. Um, money matters. Money is important. It is not our core competency. Why do I say that? I, I say that to say this. Uh, this is time honored uh, and, and, and tried wise counsel that has proven itself over the years. I'm going to say that again because I stumbled a little bit trying to put that phrase together. The advice, the guidance that you're going to receive as it pertains to responsible borrowing and budgeting is time honored and tested advice. We are not a financial services firm. And so it's very important that you understand that and that you certainly seek out the advice particularly if you are having challenging or complex financial matters, that you seek out the advice of financial experts. We are uh, unashamedly career experts. We feel uh, that that is an appropriate designation for what we have been able to do and what we have achieved in the last quarter century or more um, in this industry in which we serve and grow uh, and, and have found uh, some and demonstrated some success. We are career experts. We are not financial services experts. Uh, and so um, money matters and money is important. And it's particularly important in an environment where we are living through a depressed job economy. Uh, being able to manage your money, manage your income, manage your finances is critically important, particularly in a time where um, those resources are limited uh, and, and we are challenged uh, with identifying uh, additional sources uh, of income, of revenue. And so um, while we are pleased and we are happy uh, to provide this material, this is material that we share with individuals that seek out our services whether they are in one of the contracts that we manage directly, whether they are um, getting access to our technology and our platform through a partnership that we have, uh, whether they are participating in a training such as this. We do stand by this advice, but we also, also want to offer the caveat that it is um, always a good idea to seek out additional advice as it pertains to your specific situation um, with a, a, a financial advisor, um, with a, uh, a budgetary expert. 
Um, so with that being said, let's talk about the various types of financing. I, I think that you may be familiar with these, but I think it's an important um, a foundational um, a statement to make. And so when it comes to financing something, when it comes to financing is, is kind of a fancy way of saying purchasing, of buying, of acquiring. When it comes to uh, purchasing goods or services, there's a couple different ways that we can do that. One, the, the most basic, the cleanest, the simplest is that we pay for it out of our own uh, income, out of our own resources. We are, we are self-payers, we are self-funded, we are self-financed, whether that's education, uh, paying for education, paying for large purposes, cars, homes, um, and sort of simple, smaller, everyday um, interactions, uh, the, the simplest, the cleanest, the basic, the most efficient form of financing, of purchasing is when we are responsible um, and we uh, absorb the cost, we pay the full cost uh, on our own through our own means. So that, that is one way that we can do that. Um, another way that we can finance is through various kinds of loans. And, and, and essentially a loan, I, I would imagine that we are familiar, a loan is um, borrowing from a guarantor, from a guarantor, from a, from a company or an individual or a group of individuals that has the funds, that has the resources, that is willing to lend us those resources so that we can use those resources, those funds, that money, we can use that for ourselves for the purchase of whatever product, good, or service we are trying to acquire. And, and there are a variety of loans. Here's the key. Here's the key. It's very important. Is it, The nature of a loan means there is an expectation of repayment. It is not a gift. There is an expectation that the money that is being given to us, that's being lent to us, is going to be paid back, is going to be returned, is going to be given back. And generally speaking, most loans also include a, a charge to the grantor called interest. And you, I'm sure many of us are familiar. Interest is essentially a fee that, that as the borrower, I pay to the lender for the lender's inconvenience of having to part with the money that they lent to me. And, and so that happens across a variety of vehicles. We, we borrow money from the government. We borrow money from banks. Um, as you are well aware, a credit card is a loan. It is a loan. It's, it's, it's a regular loan that happens to the individual on behalf of um, the creditor. Uh, generally, it's a bank, although it may be um, a credit union or some other financial institution. Uh, but that is that, and we're going to look at credit cards in, in, in some detail in a moment here because they are so popular in our modern society, haven't always been, uh, but in our modern society, they are incredibly popular. So we, um, we are going to spend some time um, taking a look at, the, at, at credit cards, but credit cards are essentially mini loans. They're mini loans um, that we gain regular access to. Grants, grants are um, funds given to the recipient with no expectation of repayment. Um, a grant is awarded to the individual um, and there is no expectation of repayment. It is a gift. A grant is a gift. Now, that doesn't mean that there are not conditions. So grants many times do come with conditions, including what the funds can be used for. So that's one of the primary differences between a loan 
in a grant is not only is the fact that a, a loan is, um, is, there's an expectation of repayment and a grant is a gift, but with a loan, there generally is not any restriction with how the money is used. If, if someone is lending you, if an institution is lending you funds, it is up to your discretion how you use those funds. When an institution is granting you funds, gifting you or giving you funds, there are generally some stipulations. There are generally some limitations with, with how those funds can be used because they are a gift, because they're not being repaid. Um, the, the, the giving uh, institution, the, the philanthropic uh, organization, what have you, um, does have some terms. And so that's a grant. And then so scholarships are um, a, a combination or they can be rather scholarships can be loans or grants. The idea, though, is they are intended for education. So um, you can receive loans uh, uh, in the form or you can receive a scholarship, excuse me, in the form of a loan. Uh, but the intention is that it's still being used for education. Now, again, keep in mind um, that there's still some flexibility with this, with with a a loan that is a scholarship, uh, and meaning you could use your scholarship funds in many cases if it's a loan to purchase books and materials in addition to paying the tuition, paying the cost of the the education. Um, with a grant, many times it's going to specify. It's going to specify that this is for tuition only, um, or this is for books and, and, and lab fees and materials only, um, or some, you know, some combination. Uh, but again, even in the world of a scholarship where it may be a loan or it may be a grant, it is designed specifically for education, um, and then it is um, there are going to be stipulations that the same uh, definition of loans and grants hold true, even in the form of scholarships, there is still interest that is expected to be paid with the repayment of a scholarship loan. Um, and then there is still the expectation that with a scholarship grant, uh, that the funds are going to be directed in a, in a particular way. Questions on the various types of financing. Okay, um, so let, let's continue to move forward. So then as we think about financing, if we're going to have to borrow, if we're going in the route where um, there's a purchase that needs to be made, needs to be made, and I underscore underline needs, and I think um, individually, we have to determine, individually, we have to work out whether, in fact, we need something. Uh, do we need a credential? Do we need a license? Do we need a certification in order to get hired so that we can earn uh, the income necessary to provide for ourselves and our families? Or can we, with the current education, current work experience, current knowledge that we possess with some networking, identify an opportunity that would give us the ability to earn some income, maybe at a, a potentially at a lesser pay scale, but earn some income where we could potentially save some money and then self-finance, pay for um, our education out of pocket, uh, so that we don't have to borrow. That that's one example. But in in this time frame, where the economy is distressed, many times individuals will then turn to education. All right, I'm having a very difficult time getting a job. Let me go ahead and improve my skills, improve my education. Um, let me go ahead and put myself in a position where um, I am more marketable where I'm more marketable. And um, that, is, that is a reasonable uh, position to take. It may not be the best option because there's a chance we may have to borrow money in order to go to school and, and fund that education. And so 
Um, that's why we are titling this smart borrowing because first and foremost, um, there, there are other options that we want to look at. There are other financing options that we want to look at before we go um, the, the personal loan route. And that's what a credit card is, team. A credit card is a personal loan um, where, you, where you have backed the loan. You are 100% responsible for um, the, the obligation of repayment. Um, and so are there some other things that we can look at? Can we apply for grants? Can we apply for a scholarship um, that is generally in the form of a grant so that we don't have to repay? Um, can, we, can we find the, uh, some resources, some finances out there um, that we can use for our education um, and not have to pay back, not have to go into debt? Um, so that, that's kind of first and foremost. Now, having said that, um, I don't have the luxury to stand here and say that that's the only option. And, and some of you may be aware of some personalities and, and uh, some other individuals um, that, you know, God bless them, have gotten very successful with a particular approach. And so they can say, they are in the position where they can say, you know, never borrow, um, you know, never take out a loan, never, never, never. Um, you know, you save, you live on ramen, um, you know, how bad do you want it? Where can you cut cost? Um, you know, what can you sell uh, in order to, to, to get to where you, you want to be ultimately? Uh, I don't have that, don't have that luxury, have to actually talk to you about um, uh, some, some other options where, where borrowing may be the best option for you. Um, and so if you're going to borrow, if you're going to borrow, um, here are some strategies um, that you want to look at, particularly as it, as it pertains to credit cards. Um, and that's the big one. That's the big one. Credit cards have not always been a part of our life. Um, I, I, I don't know if folks are aware of that or not. Credit cards are a fairly new invention um, and really have, I think, altered our, our sensibility. They've, they've altered our value system, what we emphasize. Um, yeah, I don't want to get on my soapbox about credit cards. Not a huge fan. Uh, they do serve a purpose. They, they do serve a purpose. And so you know, a couple things to keep in mind is that if, in fact, you go the route of um, a seeking out, applying for, trying to get a credit card to finance some expenses that need to be paid, in your life, you, you want to try to identify a credit card that includes a couple of features that, that have your protection built in. Um, and so one of those features it will include a low interest rate and a grace period for repayment. Um, you know, if you uh, can identify a credit card that perhaps gives you 45 days to, to make a payment as opposed to 30 days. Um, and then uh, certainly, again, the lowest interest rate. Remember that interest rate is the percentage of what you owe that, that gets um, added to every payment that you make as part of paying back that money. And so one of the challenges is um, the interest rate accrues the longer you pay back those funds. So if I owe $100 and there's a 1% interest rate, that means I'm, I'm, I owe a dollar every month and the interest rate generally accrues monthly. So I owe a dollar every month that I have not paid back the full $100. So if I borrow $100, that when it comes to the end of the month, if I'm not able to pay back that full $100, a dollar in interest is added to whatever I was not able to pay off. So if I paid off $90, I've got $10 left at the end of the month. I don't owe $10. I owe $11 because I owe that dollar in interest. And that that interest is going to accrue every month that I owe money. 
And so if I only pay back a dollar, the end of the next month, uh, I still have that $10 in debt and that dollar comes back around um, as part of my interest. You, you get the idea. I, I, you know, I don't want to belabor this, but I think it is very important because we don't know where folks are. I think it is important that folks understand kind of what we're getting into when we go the credit card route or when we go the route of borrowing any money. Um, and so 1% interest is a, I mean, that's a steal. <laughs> it's, you're not, you're not going to find, um, you won't find a credit card with that kind of interest rate. You won't find many loans, government backed loans or, or loans anywhere, you know, loans from a, 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 a credit union. Um, you won't find <laughs> very many loans anywhere um, uh, that are uh, offering 1% interest. Um, credit cards, and here's the scary thing, guys, is if we're not, kind of reading that fine print, if we're not doing our research, um, you could get slammed with a credit card that is charging upwards of 30% interest. And I mean, that's scary. That, that is the kind of interest where you're just never able to get out. You're just, you're, it, it just, it is, it is a huge whack at the end of the month and you know if you're you're not generating enough income to pay off that bill, and then so then what happens? And here's the scary vicious cycle, which is why we have to be so smart about our borrowing, is that we get behind on 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 one credit card, and so to try to get out from under that credit card, we then end up opening up another one and doing the you know kind of a balance transfer, which is not a bad idea because many times when you move the balance from one card to another, you get the opportunity for a grace period. We mentioned that earlier. And, and so with that grace period, there, there's generally a period of time where you're transferring a balance um, that you don't accrue any interest. And so you're just, you know, you're just knocking down on what's called the principal, which is the money that you owe. The principal is what you owe minus any interest. Uh, and so um, if, you, if you are organized um, and structured well enough, that's not a bad idea. The problem is if we're not. A and then so what happens is there are things like balloon payments and accrued interest that happen that slam us at the end of that grace period if we don't pay off that money. And, and so then again, it just becomes a vicious cycle. And so you're, you're borrowing more money to pay off additional debt. And, and now maybe you're starting to borrow money from family members and friends. And so, you know, then you start to strain relationships and it just, it can be a challenge. So if you are going the route of a credit card, please, please, ma'am, please, sir, heed this advice, um, do your research. And ultimately, uh, you know, at this point really cannot be underscored enough. Do everything within your power to pay off your balance at the end of each month. Do everything that you can to avoid taking that debt into the next month and accruing that interest because it's just, it's more money that you owe. Do not be seduced. Do not be um, tempted by the minimum balance. The minimum balance is a great way for credit card companies to continue to charge you additional interest and keep you in debt for as long um, as possible. And then so ultimately what happens is your credit score suffers and your credit score suffers and there's lots of great research on what goes into a credit score and why it's important. But ultimately your, your credit score is um, a, a mechanism that lenders will use to determine if you are a high risk um, uh, partner when it comes to lending money. Uh, but you, you all may be aware of this. Companies, organizations, businesses now are pulling credit scores as a way to screen candidates. Now, I'm aware of a number of states that are trying to ban that practice particularly in environments where uh, the economy is depressed, um, there's a recession, the job market is low, we're in the middle of a pandemic. Um, so I'm aware of a number of states that are trying to prevent that practice because it does seem 
um, an unfair way of screening someone out um, if they're trying to make ends meet in a in a in a typical in a difficult situation and their credit scores maybe suffered as a result. Um, uh, you know, but there there are still many many places where that is legal and allowed. Um, and so that's one of the other things that you want to keep in mind is that a poor credit score can keep you from getting uh, hired at certain organizations. So we want to be very smart about our borrowing. Um, some things we've already kind of discussed this, but just to pull it out, some terminology um, you may be aware of. APR refers to the annual percentage rate. So that's the amount of interest that you're charged um, over the year that you know is then divided up into 12 month increments. Um, there's the interest that you pay. Um, and then you know that amount is applied every month as, as you can see. It could be variable or it could be fixed. Um, a variable means that it changes. It could go down, but guess what? It means it could also go up. Um, and so when you're looking at interest, one of the pieces of advice that I would offer is that you look for a fixed interest rate. That way you can build a budget. You can be much more organized when it comes to your finances because you know what your costs are month to month. With a variable interest rate, it could go down, but it could also go up. And so it's very difficult to determine um, you know, where you are and, and, and what you're, you're being required. Um, you can see the calculation there in terms of how to calculate your interest rate and then ultimately how to um, uh, do the calculation so that you understand what you're being charged on a monthly basis uh, for interest based on your balance, based on what you owe. And so you take your annual percentage rate, you divide that by 365, number of days in a year, um, and then you take that number uh, and you multiply that by your current balance. Um, and that's what's going to be your daily interest charge. So you take the interest rate, divide that by 365, and then take that number and multiply it by your current balance. That's how much interest you're being charged on a daily basis. Um, and then you can take that number um, and, and calculate. And you essentially um, you know, take that number and, and uh, multiply that by um, 30. And that's what you'll be getting charged on a, on a monthly basis, 30 days in a month. Um, uh, so um, that is your uh, calculating your interest. And then your grace period, again, is um, a date of purchase um when the interest begins um or the 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 time between the date of purchase and where the interest begins so there are some lenders that are not going to charge you interest immediately they're going to lend you the money on this date and they're going to give you a grace period before the interest kicks in this is particularly true of educational loans of student loans generally um, you will not be charged immediately the day uh, that you graduate, that you get a grace period. Um, some other things to keep in mind when it comes to uh, a student loans, um, and we'll look at things like um, a, a deferment in just a second. So when it comes to, to um, loan repayments, uh, there are loan repayment calculators and estimators all over the internet. Um, we did provide some resources that we'll look at um, at the end of the presentation. Um, but, you know, one thing we absolutely recommend that you do is um, in many of the resources that we, per, that we provide you will have a repayment calculator. But that's certainly something that you, you want to take a look at. Um, when you're developing your repayment schedule, you certainly want to make sure that you don't include um, grants or scholarships that have grants in them as part of that calculation, because remember, that's money that you don't have to pay back. Um, and, you know, and then this one, again, it's, it's you know, more um, uh, just in sort of forward thinking. This is not set in stone. There are certainly loans that may charge less than 6%, but there are certainly loans that may charge more than 6%. Um, and the term, which is the amount of time that you have to pay back the loan, um, some will be shorter than uh, 120 months, some will be uh, longer than 120 months, 120 months, uh, uh, you know, is 12 years. Um, so, or 10 years rather, excuse me, 10 years. Um, so, 
uh, you know, that, that is a, a nice rule of thumb uh, when you're thinking about kind of calculating um, what you are going to have to pay back when it comes to um, educational expenses. You know, th this one is, is, is not easy. Um, it, it, the challenge with borrowing money is that there is the expectation of repayment. And if repayment doesn't happen uh, in the time frame in which the borrower and the lender agree, there are some real repercussions. There are some real consequences that, that are associated with that, um, including uh, results to, to one's credit um, a, a, that can be long lasting. Um, and that, you know, that's not even including um, potential criminal charges. Um, that, that is, that's, that's the reality is there's a reason why um, a credit card forms and credit card applications have, you know, those pages and pages and pages of legalese and, and small print is, um, you know, they, they've got some recourse. And, uh, you know, this is why we started by saying, you know, it, it's a good idea if you have, you know, some specific wrinkles, some unique challenges to seek out the advice of a financial professional. Um, so, you know, you just, whenever you borrow money, team, this is what it comes down to. Whenever you borrow money in whatever form you're borrowing money, you absolutely want to be sure that you are in a position to pay that back well ahead of, of the time frame um, that you've been scheduled. You, you want to make sure you have a repayment plan in place before you borrow a single dollar. Now, there are some options that you have. There are some options that you have. Deferment in particular uh, applies um, uh, mostly to um, money that has been borrowed for the purposes of education. Uh, and so many times, if you continue your education, if you're going back to school, um, you would be in what's called deferment, where you um, are not uh, necessarily having to make payments but you want to be very careful because you may still be accruing interest. And so that's something that you want to pay attention to um, is that um, it, it can temporarily halt uh, repayment of the loan. Um, it could reduce the number of payments depending on the nature of the, of the deferment, um, but it may not impact the interest rate. And so you want to make sure you pay very close attention to that. Um, and then another um, a recourse is uh, something called forbearance. Um, and, and again, forbearance applies more to um, a personal uh, loans um, of credit cards, other borrowing that may have been done um, in that situation. Uh, of, again, forbearance works the same way as deferment, except again, deferment applies more toward um, kind of education related lending forbearance. Um, is, is much more um, kind of general uh, uh, lending, um, credit cards, uh, uh, bank loans, that sort of thing. Um, questions, questions uh, up to this point on um, lending vehicles and, um, you know, the nature of debt and, and that sort of thing. Okay. So you've got, you, you've got some options when it comes to repayment and when it comes to developing a payment plan, particularly if you run into a challenge. And, and this, is, this is, is something that I think maybe we kind of take for granted is that if you are in good communication with your lender, uh, and even if your lender is a, is a big multinational conglomerate uh, like a Wells Fargo or a BOA or a Chase Financial, I mean, just these behemoth companies, um, even in a situation like that, uh, if you put in the work, if you put in the effort to communicate, to communicate a couple different ways on a regular basis to seek out assistance 
um, you can get some help. You can get help in, in terms of um, uh, what would be considered a graduated repayment. You can see the description there, an extended repayment. Um, you can see the description there, um, you know, or even um, something that takes into account a loss of income and income sensitive kind of repayment plan. So you've got some support out there. You have some options out there when it comes to repayment, particularly if you fall on hard times. Now, these things are options. It does not mean that the lender will approve of them. It, 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 there's no guarantee. Um, and so, you know, you, you may have to then seek additional support, seek additional assistance. There are um, nonprofit organizations that operate nationally um, that are kind of consumer advocacy groups um, uh, uh, that, that work with lenders on your behalf if your efforts um, have been unsuccessful. So, you know, there are some things in place, uh, but it, it's going to require a lot of work. It's going to require um, a lot of effort. So, you know, you're like, man, is it even worth it? Well, that's so ultimately team, you know, that's, that's the, that's what it comes down to is when you go to borrow, is it worth it? Cause you, you got to take all this into consideration is when I go to borrow this money, am I going to be able to pay it back? And if I fall on hard times, you know, it, it, am I willing to put in the work and the effort, you know, otherwise, I'm subject to the consequences of, of lack of repayment. So, but here's the, the good news is there are resources out there to help if you find yourself in a position um, where you're where you're unable to meet the 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 agreed upon standard terms. So how do we how do we do that? How do we put ourselves in that position? You know, kind of it, it's it's basic, it's simple, um, but we kind of take for granted, and that's creating a budget. Uh, your your budget is nothing more than than understanding how much money is coming in and how much money is going out and what am I left with at the end. Uh, your your income is the money that you earn that comes into your home through a variety of means. Um, you know income that you're generating from work, but it you know it, it may be child support, it may be alimony, it may be um, you know uh, scheduled payments, uh, uh, government benefit lots of different sources of income. Obligations are our expenses, our rent, our mortgage payment, utility payment, child support, alimony, um, you know, if those things uh, apply to us. Um, and of course, any loans uh, that we have outstanding. Um, so those are our obligations. And then, you know, what, once you have paid your obligations, what you have left over um, is what we would refer to as discretionary income or fund money. Um, you know, where you can kind of uh, do what you wish once you've met your obligations um, and your obligations are those things um, that you have agreed to pay um, our bills, our bills, no, no fancier way to, to say that. So, you know, one of the, the key ways to increase wealth, to put ourselves in a better position um, for a sustainable lifestyle is to generate income. And so one way is to generate income is to go to work, to work. That's uh, is absolutely a way to generate income. Um, uh, you know, but there are other ways. This is, this is not an exhaustive list. Certainly it's a suggestion, um, you know, but you can sell some things. You can uh, try to pick up an additional job um, if you're working already, or if you're going to school, trying to pick up an additional job. Um, if you have a roommate, um, or maybe seeking out a roommate to help you share expenses, um, maybe setting up a baby, uh, a babysitting co-op. Um, and, you know, that is where, you know, maybe th there's a couple of single parents kind of in your network. And so you try to coordinate work schedules so um, that, you know, while this individual is working, um, we're going to, you know, I will watch everyone's kids during this period of time, but then I go to work. Um, you know, at these days and these hours. And so we'll need someone to watch my kids at that time. And, you know, so you just, you try to try to work it out. Um, but again, it's, it's not an exhaustive list, but this is a combination of kind of ways to generate income. And one of the ways to generate income to have more money is to spend less. 
Um, and so, you know, there are things that we can do to ensure that we're spending less. Um, and then, you know, kind of as we as we come to the end, um, you know, I want to kind of leave you with with a couple of resources that I think are, are worth you checking out. Um, I put Nerd Wallet at the top. It's my favorite. Uh, it's an app that I use. It's a it's a, a website, um, but they also have an app. Most of these are apps um, as well as as websites. Mint.com is another one. But with Nerd Wallet, you you it it monitors your credit score. You can check your credit score. It has repayment calculators. It has budgeting tools. Um, it's got great articles and information and resources. Um, it monitors activity. It will tell you um, as much as you give access to. So, you know, I mean, someone may, Charles, I don't want to give some app my banking information and all that. And I can understand. I can understand your hesitation. Um, I feel very confident in its security protocols. And um, I feel, you know, that my information is, is secured. Um, and, you know, so it notices, it notices when I spent a lot of money eating out, um, uh, you know, when I'm, whatever I'm using to, to pay for that um, and keeps me uh, on track. Um, Mint.com is, is very similar to NerdWallet, kind of one of these all-in-one um, personal financing tools. Um, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal's are different ways to, to send and receive money. Um, you know, so if you are offering services um, and, and, you know, you're not able to receive cash, um, these are ways that individuals could compensate you for services that you provided. And then Every Dollar and Pocket Guard are a couple of apps that we um, recommend. They, they are high on Nerd Wallet's recommendation list. Um, it's kind of simple, basic budgeting tools. Um, if you're just getting started, um, some of this other stuff is overwhelming. Um, these are, you know, some more kind of basic budgeting tools to get you started, to get you going, help get you organized, and then move you in a position um, where you can kind of go from there. Uh, and so to wrap up, you know, I, again, really appreciate everyone's attention um, uh, and, and participation. It's, uh, it's a lot, you know, finances for some is, is a lot of fun. It's, it, it's a, it's a fun conversation. There's, there's lots of information out there for others. It can be very overwhelming. Um, I do have a passion for personal finances. I've, I've taken an interest in, in personal finances and wealth building. And um, so uh, hopefully uh, this has been informative and, and helpful for folks. Um, just, you know, a couple of things to keep in mind. You know, wealth comes from having more income than obligations. It's, it, you know, not much more complicated than that. Um, you want more money coming in than going out. That's how you build wealth. Um, if you have to uh, uh, incur debt, if you have to take on some debt, um, you want to pay it off immediately. This, you do not want to hold on to debt. Debt is not something you want to carry along. Uh, and there are some options. There are some repayment uh, options out there to help you um, a get out of debt. And then uh, lastly, um, if you have to borrow when borrowing, you got you you absolutely want to be meticulous in your research and approach um, so that you are uh, finding the best terms for borrowing money, the best interest rate, the best um, length of, of repayment possible uh, so that you are not overwhelmed by your uh, repayment. Um, so with that, uh, I don't know if there are any additional questions, um, comments, feedback that, that folks may have as we, as we wrap up today. Uh, well, again, thank you uh, so much for joining us. Thank you so much for your time. Um, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, um, Santa Barbara, this has been great. Uh, stay healthy, stay safe, stay in the fight, and uh, we'll, we'll talk again soon. Uh, next week, we'll talk again next week. So hopefully we'll, we'll be back and uh, we'll have an opportunity to catch up with you then. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.